uh, man, I'm always surprised about how quickly kids, you know, I'm just speaking of my kids, they pick stuff up if you, if you give them these ideas. So That's right. like, we'll come home, we'll come home and I'll talk to them about my day. And same thing, right. As I try to give them insight into what I'm doing and the conversations I've had with clients and, and that stuff. And man, I'm always surprised at how quickly they pick it up. And I'll always try to take it to a conclusion and be like, if you're in this situation, you know, what would you do? Right. And uh, anyways, I, I thought yeah. that's a, a great testament, kind of the way the books are written. But you touched well, on a couple. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. I was going to say you touched on a couple of things there that uh, I want to make sure we touch on before we clip wrap up. One is why this isn't being taught in schools. And also number two is uh, this idea of empowering our kids so that they're not just uh, it's not just rote memorization. Uh, so yeah. I want to touch on Jaden, too, before we jump off. Oh, but yeah. but. Uh, give me some input, man. What's your opinion? Why is this stuff not being taught in schools? Well, recently there was a group that had that question, uh, trying to assess the quality of, of the, the school system in America. They called themselves the National Commission on Excellence in Education. They, they got this group together of experts and you know people who are passionate about education. They went on a listening tour around the country for 18 months, uh, talking to teachers and 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 parents and students, reviewing curriculum, trying to just get a thorough analysis of how education is going in America. Uh, and then they recently published a report called A Nation at Risk, where they, uh, they, they warned in that report, this is a verbatim quote, they said, America's educational um, uh, performance is being overwhelmed by a rising tide of mediocrity that threatens to overwhelm America's educational foundations. And that if a foreign government had attempted to impose upon us the very mediocre educational performance that now exists today, we might have viewed it as an act of war. As it stands, they said, we've allowed this to happen to ourselves. Now, this rising tide of mediocrity, this, this, uh, the, their report mm -hmm. again was called A Nation at Risk. They called it an open letter to the American people. Well, I, I fibbed a little bit when I set up this story. This did not recently happen. This happened. This report came out April 26th, 1983. The Reagan administration 40 years ago published this, this warning to the American people about mediocrity in the school system. When I share this story in my uh, speaking engagements around the country, different groups, different sizes, I always, I always love sharing this story. And then I say, raise of hands. Who in this audience thinks that the school system has substantially improved in the last 40 years? To date, nobody has raised their hand because we all know that it's if it was mediocre then, it's it's probably a colorful four-letter word today is, is what I might use to, to describe it. So, look, um, the, the school system has... Uh, I was speaking to a parents group uh, a few months back and the mom was uh, in the Q&A after was rattling off all these examples of why she's frustrated with the school system. You know, the critical race theory and, and you know, all the gender wars and awful books in the library and blah, 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 blah. And she said the school's system is broken. And I, I, I said, oh, hang on. Respectfully, I'm going to disagree with you. I don't think the school system is broken at all. I think it has been perfected based on a flawed design. When you go back and you look at the Horace Manns and the John Deweys and all these early pioneers of our modern government school system, what's happening today is a direct outgrowth and byproduct of their intent, why they were trying to do this. They did not want to raise critical thinkers, independent-minded, entrepreneurial, self-governing people. They wanted obedient soldiers and citizens. This is the Prussian model that they got from Prussia, this very authoritarian model. They wanted a collective that was easily controlled and subordinated to the ruling elite. That is what they were after. That is what we've produced today. So I don't think it's broken. I think what's happening is, is intentional and is an outgrowth of what, what's happened. So if you don't like the output, if you don't want your kids to turn into what we're seeing these schools pump our, our children out to be, you have to question the nature of the system itself. You have to rescue your children from that system because it is, it's not impossible. There are a number of kids who turn out to be well-functioning, productive people uh, who, who, didn't, uh, who still went to the system. So it's, it's not uh, impossible. It's just a massive, massive, massive up, uh, uphill challenge that would require parents to be extremely involved, extremely aware, um, and, and help shield their kids and teach their kids and all the things despite the challenges that they're having. So 
And, and the final thing I'll share is for those who consider themselves on the right, the conservatives, libertarians and others, the school, the government school system is dominated by people on the left. Eighty seven percent of high school teachers support Democrats. And then you think, OK, well, high school. Yeah, I get it. But not in the elementary school. That's when things are just, you know, benign and apolitical and whatever. Eighty four percent of elementary school teachers support Democrats. So this system has been infused with people who share a worldview, who are in an intellectual echo chamber of, of groupthink that few people, before we had like libs of TikTok and other people shining a spotlight on what's going on, few people questioned. So they've created this echo chamber and, and all the kids that are being pumped out and all the social justice warriors and, and everything is a direct byproduct of this system that we've let uh, uh, be mediocre and sub mediocre for decades. So, so yeah, I'm a big fan of homeschooling, you know, private school, micro school, all the rest. Uh, but, I, but I, I, I don't think every parent has to pull their kid out of government schools. I, I think you'll get better outcomes that way. But if your kids are going to be in the government schools, your responsibility, if you want a well-functioning, smart, independent child is is triple what any other parent is because you've got to be on guard you have to be intentional you have to be teaching your kids at home uh so so for Tuttle twins half of our audience is homeschoolers the other half is public private and charter school and those parents know that they have to do a little bit more they have to provide their kids a counter agent to to thwart all the the intellectual viruses that they're you know getting in the school um, and so for them, our resources can be a way to supplement in the home what they know that their kids aren't learning in the schools. One thing I've told my kids over the years is that I, I think I mentioned this rote memorization, right? It's no longer needed, right? It's their job when they go to school is to ask good questions. It's to evaluate the information that they're, be, they're being given. If you want to see the entire episode? Click here. If you want to learn how investors use infinite banking to increase their returns, and lower their taxes, click here. If you wanna see if infinite banking is for you and you have some questions, hop on a discovery call with us and one of our coaches. The link for that will be in the description.